Well, hello, geometers and seekers of general truths. In this video, we will discuss and prove the inscribed quadrilateral theorem, which states the following. A quadrilateral can be inscribed in a circle if and only if the opposite angles are supplementary. So let's start out by drawing this picture, right? So quadrilateral means four-sided. Inscribed means that its angles or its vertices are all touching the circle. So let's just label this point A, B, okay? And I am uh, purposely drawing this quadrilateral to be kind of an irregular looking one. It's not a rhombus or a square or any of the shapes that have, you know, those nice, neat properties. Okay, so it's going to look something like this. Okay, and um, A, B, C, D. All right, so it's not, a, it looks kind of like a trapezoid, but it really, it isn't. Uh, we don't know anything. We don't know if any of the lines here are parallel or whatnot. So the only thing we can say is that there's four sides and four points and each of those points are on the circle itself. Okay. And what we want to show and we want to prove right, is that the measure of angle A, its opposite angles, right? so the opposite angles, maybe the best way we can say is that the angles that are not connected by any, by any line. So A and B are not opposite because they are connected by this line segment. But A and C are opposites because they're not connected by any particular single line. So we want to show that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle C is equal to 180 degrees. And also that the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle D is also equal to 180 degrees. Okay. And um, what I'm going to do is just only sh explain this first part right here. So we should put this into two sections part one and part two uh, because part two follows pretty easily and you can kind of replicate the same steps for part two so I'm going to focus on part one here and then um, I'll leave it to you as an exercise to work on and show me what um, that part two is also true okay so without further ado let's approach this problem and I'm gonna use you know information from the previous theorems on inscribed angles so if you haven't seen that or you haven't worked on, understood that please go back and look at those notes okay so let's look here at angle a now if we look at this picture angle a it intercepts arc bd okay so i'm going to highlight this that angle a intercepts arc bd okay which means that angle a is one half of arc bd Okay, so that's going to be um, an important part of this proof. Okay, so angle A is equal to one half of arc BD because of the inscribed angle theorem. Now let's look at angle C. Actually, let me just label this real quick. So just to be clear, angle A is this line right here. All right, so. Uh, this is driving me a little bit crazy, so I redrew the lines to be straight. But angle A here is the combination of AB and AD. That's angle A. Okay, so it intercepts that highlighted yellow arc. Now let's look at angle C. So angle C intercepts this arc over here, right? So angle C intercepts arc the other the other arc BD. Okay, so maybe we need to clarify this. This this first here, BD, the yellow arc, that's kind of the bigger one. So we'll call this BD major, right? And then the second part here, we can say that angle C is equal to one half the measure of arc BD minor. Okay. Really, by the exact same reason, the inscribed angle theorem. Okay, now. Now what we can do is then take these two equations and add them. Add the right, the, the left side of the equation and add the right side of the equation. Okay. And let, let's see what we come up with here. Okay. 
So the so step three, and this is just substitution, is our reasoning here, that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle C is equal to one half of BD major plus one half the measure of arc BD minor. And then from here, let's, um, you know, we got a one half in both of these terms, so we can factor it out. One half times the quantity BD major plus one plus the measure of BD minor. So here, it seems like we've gotten nowhere. We've introduced the problem. We've got some variables, some angles, um, and it seems like we've gotten nowhere. Um, we're trying to show, though, that it, angle A and angle C is equal to 180. And all we've got here is an equation with, uh, with a 1 half and a sum. But again, it, it is precisely in these dark moments that we get really, really close and we find our solution. So if you look at this arc, right, BD major is this yellow arc and BD minor is this green arc. Together, they are the circle. Together, they add up the entire circle. So the combination of those two arc measures, BD major, BD minor, together, they are equal to 360 degrees. So the measure of angle A is equal to the measure, plus the measure of angle C is equal to one half times these two arcs added together is equal to 360 degrees. One half times 360 is equal to 180. So I'll write this down here in my final answer, that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle C is in fact equal to 180 degrees which is exactly what we set out to prove, okay? So we proved part A, and like I said, I'm gonna leave part, part two, uh, part, we proved part one, and like I said, I'm gonna leave part two to you, because it's very, it follows pretty closely to this, you can kind of repeat the exact same steps. Um, as always, thank you for watching. Please continue with the rest of the examples, and have a wonderful day.